Bun găsit! Astăzi, la secvențe Trinita, vă purtăm într-un loc special, exotic pentru mulți dintre noi și, cred, totodată mai puțin cunoscut. Într-un loc în care, în ultimii 70 de ani, ortodoxia a început ușor să pătrundă. Este vorba despre Kenya. Ghid ne va fi părintele Agapios, care este astăzi preot într-o regiune din vestul acestei țări. Născut într-o familie de protestanți, părintele s-a convertit la ortodoxie în perioada adolescenței. Visa să devină pastor, însă în urma întâlnirii cu un preot ortodox a hotărât să primească dreapta credință. Astăzi are în grijă 130 de copii orfani, cărora se străduiește să le ofere nu doar hrană, ci și o șansă la educație. Povestea lui în minutele următoare. Părintele Agapios ne-am întâlnit la București în scurta lui vizită aici. Este pentru a doua oară când ajunge în țara noastră, iar prieteniile legate cu românii l-au făcut să privească România ca pe a doua lui casă. I had a friend from America. He was coming to Romania and also to Kenya to support orphanages. So he visited me the first time and he told me uh, I'm thinking of how I can take you to Romania. And then I was wondering, why is this man speaking about Romania instead of taking me to America? And uh, I told him, instead of taking me to Romania, you need to take me to America. And then he said, I know what I'm telling you. I have been in Romania and I know. Then when he went back, I started investigating about Romania as a country and I saw that it's an orthodox country. Cu românii s-a împrietenit pe rețelele sociale. Prima dată a ajuns în 2019 și spune el, a plecat complet schimbat de aici, întrucât a avut șansa pentru prima dată să cunoască o țară ortodoxă. My first time journey changed my life completely because during my stay here I was mostly in the monasteries, praying and working. I went to a monastery and I told the abbot, I need to work like the monks. What they do, I need to do. When they go to the, to the field to plant, I was going with them. Going to make candles, I was with them making bread. I learned how to make bread, how to make candles, how to plant. Uh, some seeds, how to, how to look after the cows and even to milk the cows and to carry the milk from where the cows are to the monastery. I learned how to carry. I learned a lot of things and in every place I was visiting, they were giving me money. What I love most, Romanian people are friendly, lovely and always welcoming. And every place I visit, I'm always new. But when I go there, I try to adapt to the new family. And by the time I'll be leaving, I'm always in tears. Romania is my second home, really. A revenit în ianuarie anul acesta la invitația unor prieteni, prilej cu care a vizitat mai multe orașe. A avut acum ocazia să vadă zăpadă pentru prima dată și ne spune cu zâmbetul pe buze să învețe un nou mers, mersul pe gheață. When I came here, I was in sandals, open shoes, and my my host was laughing at me. So when I was about to leave to Cluj, he gave me these shoes and he told me now you need to put up like a, a soldier because you are going to face it tough outside there. And uh, I didn't understand what he was meaning. So when I went the first day, I saw the snow. I wanted to test. And after three days, I was very sick with tonsils. I was forced to go for medication. And then also one day I went to, I went to Saturn Parish and uh, it was snoring. And I didn't know that when you walk, you need to have another style of walking. 
So I was very fast and I found myself down and everyone was laughing at me. Uh, although I was hurt a bit, but I was, I was forced to persevere as a man. I broke my phone. I stayed without a phone for about three days because it was supposed to be fixed. So I have really faced it rough for me to adapt to the new weather. But now I'm used to So I know how to move around the snow. Mărea de Agapios l-a primit la Hirotonie. Habil Lipesa Omucuba, căci așa se numește în buletin, s-a născut într-o familie de protestanți foarte apropiați de credința lor. În Kenya sunt multe familii poligame, iar tatăl lui i-a părăsit când erau mici, alegând să meargă la a doua soție. Mama lui a fost astfel nevoită să facă mari sacrificii pentru a-și crește copiii. My family was polygamy and my father left us when we were very young and he went to the second wife. So it was very hard for me to pay my school fees. My mother was struggling every time. She could go to work and then when she comes back we have some money for food. It was not easy, really easy for us to get meals every day. So we could get maybe one meal in a day. Crescut de mic în acest atașament față de spiritualitate, visa să devină pastor. Mergea adesea cu Biblia în mână și făcea misiune. I was born uh, in a Christian family, but Protestant. And uh, because my mother Uh, used to tell us every time to go to church and I was going to church every every time every Sunday and when I was a young boy I was among those who were teaching the children and uh, many people in the church knew that I was going to become a pastor protestant pastor and they were very happy on me în timpul liceului întâlnește însă un preot ortodox, care îl invită să viziteze parohia lui. Primește cărți despre credința ortodoxă și, citindu-le, e hotărârea să se convertească la ortodoxie și se înscrie la seminarul teologic. And uh, after the service, I was given some books to go and read about the history of the church, dogmatics and all this. So I went to read the books. And then after reading the books, I came back to the church and I told the priest, I want to become a member of Orthodox Church. Să propovăduiești dreapta credință în țara lui nu este ușor, ținând cont de istoria și cultura locului. Today, at the moment, it is really very hard to some people because When they see icons in the church, they don't know the meaning of icons, so they say that we are worshiping idols. They don't know anything about veneration of icons. So to convince somebody from Protestant church to join Orthodox church, you need to be prepared and you need to be somebody who has read more about the saints and also about church history. Trecând de mic prin greutăți, părintele Agapio s-a empatizat ușor cu suferința semenilor. În inima lui, încă din timpul seminarului, s-a născut un mare vis, să fie un sprijin real pentru copiii orfani din Kenya. I enjoy my mission because uh, when I was converted and then I went to the seminary, I found a lot of food in the seminary. I was eating and leaving some food. And when I go outside, I get children who are angry, they don't have food. I decided to ask the bishop so that I can start feeding the children and he accepted. So mostly, uh, I like dealing with the children. În Kenya, din cauza poligamiei, mulți copii ajung să fie abandonați. Văzându-i pe mulți dintre ei căutând hrană printre gunoaie, s-a hotărât să ducă la îndeplinire făgăduința de a le fi alături. Tell me more about your mission. 
in Kenya? My mission in Kenya started immediately after uh, when I joined the seminary and then when I completed the seminary I was sent to the parish to serve as a catechist. And by that time I was married and I was expecting my first born child. So I was very happy, but now it was very hard for me to support my wife. I was working in a company of construction. I could go in the morning and come back in the evening. And when I come back, I was very tired. And at the same time, I could meet children who were angry, uh, moving around the city without food, taking food from the dustbin, and I could think of a way of helping them. And one day when I was ordained a priest, I thought of this, that when I was educated, I made a vow to my God that I'm going to help the children. And so this came into my mind immediately after my ordination. And uh, after this, I was not getting a lot of money, but now because it was a privilege to me, uh, the payment was $100 every month. So I saw that this is a lot of money because I was struggling, maybe in a month I could get $4,040. Uh, uh, $4, so because now my salary was now up like a uh, hundred thousand, like a uh, hundred dollars a month. So I thought of now out of this money, I can start helping the children. And that's how I started. Visul a devenit realitate. În prezent are 130 de copii care sunt sub directa lui îngrijire la școala pentru orfani Sfânta Tabita din Malava. Pentru a le putea oferi măcar o masă pe zi, dar și șansa la educație, Părintele Agapios se străduiește în mod constant să găsească resurse. Mult ajutor a primit de la românii cu care în timp a stabilit relații de prietenie. Being in Romania is a great privilege to me. Uh, when I came here and then I went back to Kenya, we have many children who are needy, they need my support. I was forced to extend my number from 50 children to 130. I'm still receiving more children who are supposed to join the orphanage. And I fully depend to my friends in Romania because they are promising, loving, and ready to support my programs. And I feel that right now, I cannot really run my programs without their support. These children are the future Orthodox Church members in my country. Datorită misiunii sale, a devenit un om cunoscut și respectat în Kenya. Orthodox Church has made my life to change uh, tremendously, miraculously. It's like a, I'm somebody who is respected in the society because of the work which I do. Even those people who are highly learned, who are doctors, who are lawyers, cannot do my work. And uh, they are always wondering where I get money to support more than 100 children. Both of them are in school, they are eating, they are getting everything that they need. Datorită misiunii sale, a devenit un om cunoscut și respectat în Kenya. Părintele are și o familie frumoasă. Are cinci copii, dintre care doi sunt gemeni și unul adoptat. Pe Maria, fetița adoptată, dar și pe mama ei, părintele Agapios le-a salvat de la moarte. I was in hospital and behind me people were talking and they were talking about abortion. They wanted to abort because There was a young girl who was pregnant by a relative and she was in school. And then I hear them saying we need to abort this baby because this child, this girl is not going to be allowed in the community. We have some communities in Kenya 
when you are pregnant by your relative, you are supposed to be killed. The girl is supposed to be killed and the man also. So this uh, young girl was supposed to be killed and now she was supposed to do abortion so that she can be left in the family. And then when I heard it, I called one person among them and I told her, uh, I'm very sorry for what happened, but now I want to request you one thing. I'm Father Agapius, I'm taking care of the children, those who have no parents, and I'm requesting you to give me to let this child, this lady give birth, and then after I'm going to take the baby. And uh, the woman looked at me as if I was mad. And because there was somebody who knows me there, he told her, I know this person is a pastor and he is taking care of the children. If he's saying he will take the child, yes, is is right. And then she asked me, are you sure you are going to take the child? I said yes. And then when the girl gave birth, I was called at night. And then the following day in the morning, I went to take the baby without telling my wife. So I went and picked the baby. And then I called my wife. I told my wife, we, we have a new visitor. And I took a picture and I sent to my wife. And my wife was mad on me. And then when she came home, I tried to explain to her, my wife was not really ready to accept. And then I told my wife, now uh, I need to call the, the woman who directed me to this lady so that we can meet her. And then we went, we met that woman, and the woman shared all the story to my wife, and now my wife said yes. It was a boy or a girl? It was a girl, and uh, when I wanted to name this child, I called, I invited my bishop. First we named this child Destiny, and then when my bishop came, he told me, ah, the baby looks like Maria. And then uh, he named the baby Maria, and I was so happy. So the baby is healthy, happy, and she's growing very fast. When my girls came back from school, uh, they looked at the baby and they said, Mom, this is our last born. You are not supposed to give birth again because now we, ha we are five children. And I was laughing in the bedroom. And uh, the following day I told my wife, you see, now we are not going to release this baby to anyone. Because now, our girls love the baby, so we need to adapt the baby. Convertirea la ortodoxie i-a schimbat total viața. Simte că este cel mai mare dar de la Dumnezeu. Orthodoxy has changed my life, uh, the way I cannot even tell myself. And that's why I normally say that God had a purpose for me to convert to Orthodox Church, because out of Uh, my conversion, my family, my children, my wife, they are now Orthodox. When my children were going to school, they told me we need to go to a Catholic church. We don't want to go to a Protestant uh, school because in Kenya we only have Protestants and Catholic schools. So I took one of my girls to a Protestant and then another one to a Catholic and they are twins, I have never separated them. The one who went to protection uh, school told me, I don't want to be in that school, you need to transfer me. So my family have been brought up in Orthodox faith and uh, I see they will not change to become Protestants. Then also out of myself being Orthodox, I have been able to evangelize to the children, and I have baptized many children, and they are Orthodox. So I'm really evangelizing to many communities, and when I bring these children together, they stay together as a family, as Orthodox members. Maybe sometimes when I'm not home, and they don't participate in liturgical services, they feel like if they are sick.
Cu părintele Agapio s-am vorbit și despre atacurile teroriste din Kenya. Ne-am mărturisit că sunt zone în care creștinii sunt cu adevărat în pericol, iar acest lucru ar trebui să fie un semnal de alarmă pentru restul lumii. And we have this kind of persecutions. We have some places where we have many Muslims and when you are a Christian, you are not supposed to show up yourself that you are a Christian. So many people are dying, especially in eastern part of Kenya. Many uh, specialty teachers, doctors, policemen, they are dying because of terrorists. Because when they realize that you are a, a Christian, they kill you. So what you normally do when you go to these areas, you are not supposed to wear the cross. You are not supposed to identify yourself as a Christian. You are supposed to be, when they greet you, you need to know how to answer uh, as a Muslim so that you can survive in these areas. Muslims are about uh, 5.5 million in Kenya. And uh, that's a very big number. It's about 10.5% of the Christians in Kenya, of the Muslims in Kenya. Yes. About this situation, do you have a message for the entire world? Yeah, really, I have a message to the entire world. We need to pray very hard for the African countries because Islamic uh, religion is growing very fast. Young people are suffering. They are being taken to Arabian countries for employment. And then when they go, they need to stay there for two years, then they come back to Kenya. So during their stay, they are, uh, they are forced to become Muslims. And they adapt to this religion very quickly. And when they are sent back, they join Muslims and then others go. So they are changing many young men to Muslim. And when uh, you are found that you cannot agree with them, especially ladies, they are killed uh, in their countries. And they are, some of them are brought back when they are dead. Some of them are buried in Arabian countries. So we really need evangelism in Kenya so that our people can turn to Orthodox faith instead of joining uh, Islam and also to pray that uh, many ways can be opened where our young people can be employed so that they cannot be tricked to go to Arabian countries for employment. În București a avut timp să viziteze câteva biserici și mănăstiri. L-am însoțit și noi la mănăstirea Antim. A fost extrem de entuziasmat să afle detalii din istoria bisericii noastre, mai ales din perioada comunistă. What impressed The vessels which were being used earlier by the early church and also the way that house was moved. I can't uh, believe it. <laughs> yeah. Do you know something about our communist uh, history? Yeah, I, I was told and I went to Ayud. Yeah, I visited and I saw. Întâlnirea cu Părintele Agapios ne-a reamintit de cât de binecuvântați suntem, de bogăția și frumusețea ortodoxiei de binefacerile revărsate din mila și iubirea lui Dumnezeu pentru noi, dar și de datoria noastră, a celor ce împărtășim dreapta credință de a fi uniți în a slăvi cum se cuvine pe cel de sus, dar și de a ne ajuta unii pe alții, de datoria noastră de a mărturisi pe cel ce este adevărul și de a fi vrednici propovăduitori ai Evangheliei lui Hristos.